नेक्स्ट लेट मी डिस्कस द थाइजाइड डायरोटिक्स रिमेंबर दीज थाइजाइड डायरोटिक्स दे आर कॉल्ड मीडियम एफिकेसी डायरोटिक्स नाउ द साइट ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ दीज थाइजाइड डायरोटिक्स इज एट द लेवल ऑफ डिस्टल कन्वेलेटेड ट्यूब्यूल नाउ बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द मेकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ दिस थाइजाइड डायरोटिक्स नाउ लेट मी टेल यू द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ द थाइजाइड डायरोटिक्स सो द ड्रग्स इन दिस ग्रुप इंक्लूड द बेंड्रोफ्यूमी थाइजाइड द क्लोर थाइजाइड हाइड्रोक्लोर थाइजाइड एंड देन वी हैव मेथी क्लोर थाइजाइड एंड देन पॉली थाइजाइड एंड देन वी हैव ट्राइक्लोर मेथीजाइड बेंस थाइजाइड and then we have hydrofumi thiazide then we have chlorthalidone next we have metolazone and then quinetazone and then indapamide so these are the list of your the thiazide diuretics now among these remember the chlorthalidone indapamide metolazone and quinetazone these are the thiazide like diuretics whereas the other agents in the group are the thiazides remember this point now if you see the mechanism of action of these particular drugs now you see here thiazide diuretics mainly act on the distal convoluted tubule and this part of this distal tubules they are impermeable to water and they absorb only the solutes they absorb only the solutes that is now we have a channel that is called the sodium chloride channel or the sodium chloride simporter in a normal individual what will happen is when the fluid is passing through the tubule when the fluid has reached up to the level of the distal convoluted tubule now the sodium and as well as chloride is being reabsorbed through this particular simporter mechanism now the other important point you should remember is this particular thiazide diuretics right this particular thiazide diuretics they act from the luminal side right the important mcq here is the only diuretic which is acting from the interstitial side that is your potassium sparing diuretics whereas your loop diuretics your thiazide diuretics they act from the luminal side next now so these thiazide diuretics what they will do is they will inhibit this particular sodium chloride channel now the question comes why this sodium and chloride will be reabsorbed in a normal cell if you see here in the cell we have sodium potassium atpase channels now what does this sodium potassium atpase channels do these sodium potassium atpase channels they will take three sodiums out and two potassiums in so thereby what will happen the cell it is deficient of sodium the cell is deficient of the sodium why because through your sodium potassium atpase channel three sodiums are moving out so when the cell is deficient of sodium then the cell will receive the sodium from two sources number 1 from sodium chloride sympoter mechanism the cell will get the sodium and the other thing is from sodium calcium exchanger right we have a channel called sodium calcium exchanger through this particular sodium calcium exchanger the sodium moves into the cell and in response to that the calcium goes out of the cell into the interstitium so 
the cell is receiving the sodium from the sodium chloride's importer mechanism and as well as the sodium calcium exchanger. So the sodium whichever has come here will move out of the cell through your sodium potassium ATPS channel that is through your 3 sodium 2 potassium ATPS channels. Now so in a normal individual what is happening when the sodium is getting exchanged with the calcium now where is the cell getting the calcium from? The cell is getting the calcium from the fluid, from the glomerular filtrate. The calcium whichever is present will be reabsorbed through the calcium channel and this calcium it will exchange with the sodium. This is what is the normal physiological mechanism which will be taking place in the distal convoluted tubule. Now, once you give your thiazide diuretics, right? Once you give your thiazide diuretics, what are these thiazide diuretics doing? Thiazide diuretics, they are inhibiting this particular sodium chloride channel. They are inhibiting this sodium chloride channel. Now, once the sodium chloride channel is being inhibited, then the sodium reabsorption will not occur at the level of the distal convoluted tubule. So, if you see here, the amount of sodium which is being reabsorbed at the level of the distal convoluted tubule, it is around 5 to 8 percent. Right, the amount of sodium which is being reabsorbed at the level of the distal convoluted tubule is around 5 to 8 percent. So, whenever you are giving this thiazide diuretics, it will block this sodium chloride symporter channel and thereby the sodium reabsorption does not take place. Now, once the sodium reabsorption does not take place, what will happen? This particular sodium, whichever has not been reabsorbed at the level of the distal convoluted tubule will move to the collecting duct. Will move to the collecting duct. Now, at the level of the collecting duct, what will happen? At the level of the collecting duct, this particular sodium, whichever has not been reabsorbed, will be exchanged with the potassium. Right? This sodium, whichever has not been reabsorbed, at the level of the collecting duct, will be exchanged with the potassium. So, but the, what is the amount of sodium reabsorbed here? It is hardly 2%. That means the remaining 3 to 5% of the sodium is getting excreted out. So, once there is natriuresis, along with that there is also water loss and thereby the diuresis will occur. I will repeat the mechanism. So, mechanism of action of the thiazide diuretics. Normally what will happen is at the level of the distal convoluted tubule through sodium chloride symporter nearly around 5 to 8 percent of the sodium is reabsorbed. Now why the sodium has to be reabsorbed? Because the cell is having the deficit of sodium. Why? Because through this sodium potassium ATPase 3 sodiums are gone out and 2 potassium comes in. So, because the cell is being deficient with the sodium, so the sodium from the DCT will enter into the cell. And not only that, the cell also has the source of sodium from the sodium calcium exchanger. So, thereby what will happen is, once the sodium enters into the cell, it is exchanged with the calcium. And where is this calcium coming from? This particular calcium is coming from the glomerular filtrate through the calcium channel which is there at the luminal side. Now, this is the normal mechanism. Now, whenever you are giving this thiazide diuretic, it will block this sodium chloride channel. Once the sodium chloride channel is blocked, the sodium reabsorption does not take place. So, once the sodium reabsorption does not take place, that inhibited sodium reabsorption that is the sodium which is not being reabsorbed will enter up to the level of the collecting duct. At the level of the collecting duct, nearly around 2% of the sodium will be re-exchanged with the potassium. So thereby what will happen? 
there will be potassium loss there will be potassium loss and only 2% of the sodium is reabsorbed but almost 3 to 5% of the sodium is not reabsorbed so when the sodium is getting excreted out remember the water is also lost and thereby the thiazides will show its diuretic action now the other important point you should remember here is in a normal individual the cell is getting the sodium from the sodium chloride symporter and as well as the sodium calcium exchanger but whenever you give this thiazide diuretics the sodium chloride symporter is blocked when sodium chloride symporter is blocked now the cell has to get the sodium only from the sodium calcium exchanger that is more and more sodium has to come into the cell in order to compensate the sodium exit by sodium potassium ATPase. So remember a point here if more and more sodium is entering through sodium calcium exchanger more and more calcium also should get exchanged. So where does this more and more calcium comes from? This more and more calcium comes from the reabsorption of calcium from the glomerular filtrate. So what I want to tell you is whenever you are giving this thiazide diuretics more and more calcium is reabsorbed and will be deposited within the body and resulting in what is called hypercalcemia resulting in hypercalcemia and let me tell you one important point here the calcium reabsorption through sodium calcium exchanger is by the effect of parathormone is by the effect of parathormone so parathormone will have the receptors there that receptors are called serpentine receptors so by acting on the serpentine receptors the parathormone will cause the calcium reabsorption in exchange with the sodium right so by the effect of thiazide diuretics what is the final effect happening hypercalcemia now this particular principle it is used in the treatment of idiopathic hypercalciuria this particular principle of excessive reabsorption of calcium when thiazide diuretics are given is used in the treatment of idiopathic hypercalciuria what will happen in idiopathic hypercalciuria more and more calcium is getting filtered and getting excreted out that will lead to what is called the calcium oxalate stones so those individuals who are having idiopathic hypercalciuria where more calcium is getting excreted out and where there is excess calcium oxalate stone formation within the kidney we give this thiazide diuretics why because these thiazide diuretics will cause the reabsorption of calcium from the sodium calcium exchanger so this is the mechanism of action of this particular thiazide diuretics now remember now what is your thiazide diuretics doing thiazide diuretics they are excreting the solutes so it is not only causing the potassium loss it is also causing the sodium loss it is also causing the sodium loss so remember by increasing the excretion of the solutes thiazides they make the urine very much concentrated right by causing the excretion of the solutes thiazides make the urine concentrated that is it will decrease the positive free water clearance it will decrease the positive free water clearance right next so and so they will decrease the positive free water clearance without affecting the negative free water clearance now remember what is the site at which these drugs are acting they are acting at the level of the distal convoluted tubule and these drugs they reach the lumen of the nephron they are acting for, from the luminal side they reach the lumen of the nephron via 
secretion at the level of the proximal convoluted tubule. At the level of the proximal convoluted tubule, we have an organic acid transporter system. This organic acid transporter system will secrete the thiazides into the lumen and these thiazides they will reach up to the level of the distal convoluted tubule and they will show their physiological action.